Captain Planet and the Planeteers was an educational animated series from the early 90s, the focal point being environmentalism. In 1992, Mindscape released the NES game based off the series. Each level is split up into two halves. The first half you'll control the Planeteers in either an airplane, a helicopter, or in one level, a submarine. And the other half you'll control Captain Planet himself. The Planeteer levels are basically a side-scrolling shooter. You'll have to blast your way through enemies using one of the five elements each of the Planeteers represents with their rings. Earth, fire, wind, water, and the made-up element of heart. Earth will lob rocks into the air. It has a short range, but it is powerful. Fire is the most reliable. It sends a fireball straight ahead and has a good range. Wind is a shield, which isn't very useful against most enemies, and of course the only way to find out if it works or not is to run into an enemy and die if it doesn't work. That's right, one hit kills you, at least usually. Water sends these projectiles out in this funny wave pattern. I never really use it. And heart is only useful in specific situations, like to summon a whale to attack this boat or something. It always involves communicating with animals, which is what Mati, the kid with the heart ring, did in the show. I use fire about 90% of the time. I only use heart and earth in specific spots once in a great while, and I never bother with wind or water, they both suck. Another thing that sucks is that you have a limited amount of power to use these weapons, and each one doesn't have their own energy bar. No. Instead, one energy bar represents all five elements. So if you run out using fire, you can't use it for earth or any of the other ones. You can't shoot a goddamn thing, you're just stuck. You can sometimes grab a power-up which looks like this thing to refill your weapon energy, but a lot of the time you'll need to shoot an enemy down just to find it. And you can't exactly do that without any weapon energy at all, can you? Plus, sometimes these power-ups keep changing into other power-ups in a rotation. So if you need weapon energy, you might have to wait until it decides to change in order to get it. And you could die in the meantime if there are any enemies around. Basically, if you run out of weapon energy, you're fucked. Now, these other power-ups include an extra life, represented by this planet icon, and invincibility, represented by the shield-like icon. You'll turn blue when invincible, but it's hard to tell when your invincibility is running out. You'll start flashing between normal and blue right before it changes, but you don't have much time and the music doesn't change either so you can't base your timing on that. Like I mentioned earlier, one hit kills you and that includes the walls and ceilings. You move at a pretty fast pace and the controls are really sensitive so it's not that hard at all to smack into something and die, especially near the end when the spaces get really fucking narrow. But strangely, some hazards don't kill you all in one hit and you can never tell how many hits you can still take. The one consolation you get with this is Infinite Continues, and you'll start at the beginning of whichever half of the level you're on, so you won't get a game over as Captain Planet and have to redo the Planeteer portion. Another positive is the password system. You start out with 5 lives, and after getting a game over, you get a 6 digit password. And these will be useful for parts 1 and 2 for each respective level, but you only get one chance to enter the password. You don't even have a password option at the beginning of the game, it starts you right off at the password screen. If you enter nothing or put the password in wrong, you'll go straight to the first level, so you'll have to restart the game if you fucked it up. Pressing start will cycle through the weapons while select pauses the game. You'd think that it would be the other way around. But the bigger problem is the fact that you can't pause the game and then select your weapon. You have to do it on the fly. Considering how often there's an enemy on the screen combined with the one-hit deaths and the sensitive controls, it's not very convenient at all to be shuffling through five weapons with one button. You can easily rush your way through it and then you have to go back to the beginning of the cycle, potentially pressing start 9 times before you finally land on the weapon you want, if you're still alive of course. Another problem is sometimes you get a really vague mission objective, like save the elephants. So you figure, okay, I'm just supposed to blast my way through these helicopters and once all the enemies are cleared, the level will be over and the elephants will go free. But you're supposed to pick up the elephants with the heart power, carry them through a stretch of land while avoiding the choppers, which is a bitch, and then drop it off right by the missile launcher so the elephant can stomp it to shit, allowing you to pass on through. Now that wasn't really self-explanatory. Maybe it gives you more information in the manual, and if that's the case, then this complaint is voided, but if you have to seriously figure this shit out on your own, then the game designers were really banking on you having a high level of patience and a low level of temperament.
The controls here aren't terrible, but sometimes the game just throws a screwball at you by having the nose of your vehicle tilt at a 45 degree angle. This completely fucks up your natural sense of aim. You can never shoot straight while accelerating. You have to hover if you want to get this to happen. It's so awkward. Finishing some of these levels can be a pain in the ass too. After completing your objective, there'll be some landing strip or something that you'll have to land on, but it's not exactly obvious where you're supposed to go, and if you land on the wrong spot, you'll die. And that's bullshit. Now, the Captain Planet portions are much different. You'll maneuver around in a labyrinth of some kind in each of these stages. These buildings seem to be tailor-made for those that can float. That's what Captain Planet seems to do in this game. He doesn't fly, he just kind of floats. You won't die in one hit from every enemy you make contact with or the walls and ceilings, but still, more often than not, you will. You'll at least get to respawn right where you die. Captain Planet's biggest weakness is pollution, and there's a ton of this shit smeared on many of the walls and ceilings of these levels. And a lot of these spaces are narrow, so you'll often find yourself accidentally making contact with the ceiling and you'll lose a life right on the spot. And the hit detection in this game is pretty freaking bad, so that doesn't help at all. You have two main attacks. The first one is your punch, which you'll use the A button for. It fucking sucks. You just get a quick jab out there, and since you have to be in close range to pull this off, you're almost always putting yourself in danger of dying because of the one-hit deaths. The shitty hit detection doesn't do you any favors here either. Your other attacks are the five powers that you have in the flying stages. They're all generally the same. Captain Planet transforms into a visual representation of whichever power you have equipped, and then you'll float like normal. Certain powers work against certain enemies in barricades, so much of the game is a trial and error guessing game as to which power works in certain situations. That seems interesting on paper, kind of like in Mega Man where you go around testing the water with different weapons, but it doesn't translate well in Captain Planet, mostly because a lot of the time you die in one hit, so you're taking quite a risk trying to figure out what works. And since there are five powers, it could be a long and tedious process of going through each one. The music is another issue worth griping at. First off, the Captain Planet theme is nowhere to be heard. That's usually a red flag for any licensed game right there. And secondly, the music that is there sucks balls. It sounds like whoever wrote these songs were playing the chords with one finger, they hit random keys, and once something sounded somewhat melodic, they just ran with it. Bam, another song in the bank. Next fucking song. So in the first stage, this prick Hoggish Greedly is trying to drill for oil in the national park, so you've got to stop him. You'll contend with these planes, which are a pretty easy kill, but they do have strength in numbers, so stay back and send fire at them. When you get here, this huge ass machine will shoot at you. The only way to get by is to take out its legs and pass through the opening. You can also take out the gun just above it. The screen auto scrolls, so if you're about to collide, use the B button to pull a quick U-turn and give yourself some extra space. These oil spouts are ridiculous. They're so close together, so you really can't get in between them and wait. You have to zip between all of them in one full swoop. I died so many fucking times trying this. The way I was able to get through it was by zigzagging between them, and I think a little luck has to go along with it too. Then you reach this big ass machine with all these guns, and there's no way around it and almost no way to shoot all the guns. So what do you do? You land the plane down here, and the stage is over. You don't even have to take out any of the guns. Great. So the kids call upon Captain Planet to finish off Greedly. You'll get the same cutscene every time when they summon him with the rings, and you can't skip over it. These metal balls that are fixed in the corner will shoot at you. You can punch them out and probably get some power-ups. Just move in right after they shoot so you don't walk into their line of fire. These things that pop out of the ground, as well as these floating balls, will explode once you get too close with the green shit spewing out that hurts you. So if you can't sneak around them, get close to them to trigger their explosion and quickly retreat so you don't get hit. Watch the floors, ceilings, and walls for this green slime shit that flows along. It'll kill you upon impact. Here the slime will block your path completely, so transform into water and you can make it through. Just watch your weapon level so you don't run out and get stuck later on. The whole stage is linear. Just follow the path to the end, following the strategies I mentioned for each of the hazards. Also, you can destroy these metal boxes with a few punches and get some power-ups inside. Just keep in mind that they fall, and once they hit the ground, they're useless. So grab them quick, or get underneath them to catch them. Then there'll be this gated barricade in your way. Use wind to get through, and then take the left path up. The right one leads to a dead end and is infested with slime. When you get to the spot with the two guns side by side, you won't be able to punch them. So use fire and blast through. Soon after that is the boss, these two prosthetic hands that will try to grab you, and if they do, they'll squeeze the life out of you. You can get away by mashing buttons, but they'll often regain their grip, so you want to get the hell away from them. 
Stay low when the hand up top is above you, and vice versa with the other hand. Then get in front of the window here where Greedly controls his contraptions and punch it out. Greedly surrenders and that's it. The next level has Dr. Blight, along with her computer MAL, planning to dump toxic waste into Yellowstone National Park. So you'll fly a helicopter over a bunch of trees and through some tunnels. It reminds me a lot of barnstorming on Atari. But you also have to contend with these trucks. The objective is to take them out before they reach the park and start dumping the waste. If they reach that spot, you'll just explode. I guess the Planeteers get so upset about their failure that they initiate a self-destruct sequence instead of blasting the son of a bitch before he dumps even more waste into the park. Fucking idiots. So anyway, your instinctive reaction would be to use fire, especially since this piece of shit chopper automatically aims at a 45 degree angle while you're accelerating, but that doesn't even phase them. What you want to do is send rocks out and have them land right in front of the truck, causing it to crash. These trucks are fast, and you can't catch up to them unless you fly low enough. The higher you are, the faster they'll drive. Right about here is where you want to be so you can fly past them and send the rocks in front of them. They'll also fire at you, but if you stay just high enough to fly over them, you won't be in any danger. They don't shoot all that often anyway. Then you've got to worry about plowing into the trees or flying too high and missing the tunnels. You've got to know when everything's coming. First fly over this patch of trees, then through the tunnel, and be sure not to fly too fast, or you could plow right into the truck if you catch up too soon. Then there's one more short tree after the tunnel. At each checkpoint, so to speak, these red choppers will show up and drop paratroopers. Sneak between them each time and move on, you don't have to kill them. The next truck, there'll be three trees, a tunnel, and then two more trees spaced out quite a bit. The third and final truck, there'll be a long tunnel, three sets of trees, and another tunnel but there's only one way you can catch up to it in time. After the first set of trees, you'll notice this bear just hanging around down here. Use your heart to send a beam down at it. It'll run after the truck and grab a hold of it, slowing it down. After you take it down, fly into this tunnel and it's all over. So now it's up to Captain Planet to take out Dr. Blight. There are these bats that come down from the ceilings and explode. It's almost a guarantee you'll get tagged, but if you stay low enough to the ground, they won't be triggered to attack you and you can just sneak by. These lasers will turn on and off. Wait for them to clear before moving on. Same thing goes with these green clouds of gunk. They're much thicker though, so you have to be more careful, especially when there are several in a row. They'll change one after the next, so inch your way across as soon as the next one shifts. Watch out for these green swirls. Not only will they get in your way in narrow spots, but they also shoot projectiles, so if you don't get invincibility, use earth to blast through them. Otherwise, sneak by them and get the hell away. Right after this swirl, head to the upper left hand corner of the area and there'll be two power ups that morph. Grab whichever one you feel you need the most. The entire row of green smoke here will all activate at once, but there's a long gap in between. So as soon as they turn off, book it. And whenever you run into these metal grates, use wind or water to pass through. The boss is split into two parts. Dr. Blight is cloned into four, and they'll hover around spraying green shit at you. Use heart to take them out, one hit each. Just be sure to transform back into regular form between hits to save your weapon energy. After taking them all out, head down below to take out the computer. It'll spit out projectiles, and that's your only real danger. Your targets are the four red balls that surround it. Use water this time. Again, try to save as much of your weapon energy by transforming back if you have to. In the third stage, Hoggish Greedly has escaped from prison and is soiling the seas with his drift nets. You'll control a submarine, and my god, do you have to be careful here in sneaking between these rocks. Then there are these missiles that fire from underneath. You can either slowly drift by till one of them fires, then drive as fast as you can to bypass the rest of them. The missiles will still get really close, so if this option is too risky for you, I recommend staying back at about this far away from the missiles and launch the earth rocks at them to take them out. Then there are these mines that will chase you, and they will not let up. Back up, let them chase you, and use earth to take them down in a few hits. When you get to where the whale swims back and forth, be sure that all the mines in the area are gone. Then use the heart on the whale to send him after the boat. It'll take three hits, and the baby whale will be freed from the net. After a few more missiles and mines, you'll run into these fans that try to blow you into the rocks above. Press down as you cross the whirlpool to keep yourself from going up too high. Just make sure you maintain control as you come back out. The next boat you're targeting drops explosives. There's an octopus down here, somewhat hidden behind these vines. Use heart on it and it'll swim up and block the explosive somehow. After some more fans and mines, this sideways fan will blow you into a clusterfuck of more fans. 
once it propels you head up so you don't crash into the rock or the first world that sends you down. Soon after is the third and final bolt. Once again there are mines in the area so take them out first. Then once again use the heart on the whale so it'll hit the bolt. But for some reason on the third hit the whale just leaves and the net is still in place. You have to throw a rock into the net to finally release the baby whale. Who the hell would have guessed that after accomplishing the same mission earlier differently? After that is some more familiar enemies and then you have to park your submarine in this location here. Now Captain Planet has to take out Greedly. Use water or wind to get through this falling garbage. There's a fork in the road right away. It meets back in the same spot soon after, but you're better off taking the low route. There's less shit this way and you don't have to worry about getting sucked into this garbage chute that sends you right into the path of falling garbage which kills you instantly by the way. Keep your eyes open for all the orangey red shit on the ceilings and walls. They drip down sometimes which deals you damage and it's instant death if you fly into any of it. When you get here there'll be several chutes with metal balls that fire out and explode. Don't worry about the debris, it can't hurt you. Wait for the ball to shoot out before moving along and do them one at a time. Just make sure you stay up high enough, otherwise you'll get sucked in and die from the surrounding garbage. Watch out for this orange prick that shoots at you. Get level with its upper half and charge in with a punch quickly. Always remember to avoid these shoots at all times and be as careful as possible when flying through narrow corridors. The boss battle is fucking stupid and difficult as hell. You have 8 rows of suction chutes along the ceiling and floor, 16 altogether, and you have to fly through all of them without any of them sucking you up. There's no safe haven in between. You have to be flawless in controlling the captain away from both of them all the way through. There's no advice I can really give you here. You have to be either really good or just plain lucky. Thankfully all you have to do is get across and greedily surrenders, but goddamn it's still a difficult task to accomplish. Next mission is to take down Luton Plunder and his stooge Argos Bleak that are murdering elephants for their tusks, fucking assholes. This is the stage I was mentioning earlier where you have to use your heart power to pick up the elephants and carry them across the desert. Make sure the enemy helicopters are cleared before you pick up the pachyderm, it'll at least buy you some extra time. The thing that sucks is that you can't fire back, you have to carry these bastards all the way without getting hit. This is the only method I've been able to figure out on how to get this elephant across, it's a pain in the ass. Then you have to drop them off in these specific spots so they can stomp the missile launchers. After three of them, the stage is over. Oh yeah, except for the landing part. Look, doesn't this seem like you're supposed to fly into the tunnel here? But if you try it, you crash and burn. What the hell? You're supposed to just land here like this. Imagine if this was your last life and you finally got all three elephants across and you die trying to land the copter and have to start all over. You'd have to kill something for real. So Captain Planet has to travel through this elephant slaughterhouse to take down these bastards. Some slaughterhouse, this looks like the fucking temple of doom. Use water to slip through the flowing lava or liquid fire or whatever it is. And use fire to free the elephants from their cages, who decide to just stand there after you do so. You really only need to free the elephants whose cages block your path. It's not a priority to get them all out. The cages reset anyway if you go back, so it's a waste of time to free the ones off to the side. Watch out for these purple crawly things that wrap you up like a mummy and drain your health. You can mash buttons to get away, but it only seems to work when it wants to, so do whatever you can to not get caught. These robot guys can be a pain too, because their fire projectiles are one hit death. The only way to kill them is like with five punches, and you'll be right in the line of fire to punch. But they take a short break between attacks, so once you get their timing down, fly up and away from danger, then come back down and take a punch or two, and repeat. But sometimes the ceiling is too low to be able to pull this off. Since it takes so many punches to kill, you have to be right in its way. It's a one-hit death and there's no escape. This means you will die here. I dare someone to do a no-hit run of this game. These spouts will shoot two fireballs at a time. Watch their timing and move on when they stop. This part is a bitch too. It seems like there's nowhere to go, but it turns out you have to turn into water and fly through this lava river. And then surface here, kill the purple fuck, and then grab the power up here when it's a weapons charge cause you'll probably use most of your weapon energy flying through the lava. Invincibility also works here too so grab one of those two options. Use water to fly through this barricade but there's a purple thing waiting for you on the other side. Use earth to plow through these purple guys that linger along the wall in this narrow space. Use the water heading up this way and then through this narrow space here and the boss is up ahead right after this asshole robot you can't kill without dying first. The boss battle is retarded. The two pricks in charge of the ivory business will run away from you in this stupid machine, firing at you every once in a while. You have to chase it down and punch it once to win. 
If they reach the end first, you die. You have to avoid making contact with the walls. It'll slow you down. But it is a simple pattern of flying high and then low every time. So that's easy to remember. There's also a flow of fire that you have to get through with water. Once you get past the first eight walls, the fire flow is right after. Equip the water for as short of a duration as possible. You'll fly much faster without it. After you take them out, it's one more full stage to go. The final mission is to stop the evil Duke Nukem. Duke Nukem, really? Well, Duke Nukem apparently has a radioactive factory on the South Pole that's opening up a major hole in the ozone layer. This level is ridiculous. There are narrow spaces and random falling sheets of ice out the ass. Fly just over the satellite dish and speed up to avoid the two sheets of ice here, but slow down after the first one so you don't even trigger the second one. Then take the top route to avoid the gun down here. Get ahead of the screen so you can slip down here before the gun ahead fires at you, and right after that the falling sheet of ice will take you out. And it's almost fucking impossible to get by due to the lack of room. The ceiling is right above you, and there's a wall dead ahead. It's insane. The only way I could get by was to pull the 180 move at just the right time. It's like surgery. And then you have a couple of ice sheets to worry about right after. Don't die. You don't want to have to go through that bullshit again. The next satellite dish fires at you once you cross over it. So kick up some speed to get away from it, followed by another ice sheet. These laser things turn on and off. Obviously you want to wait for them to clear before passing. Take the middle path, speed up to avoid the ice, and get ready for these speedy pink pricks. Slip down here and back up to let them pass you. Take the middle path again, kill everything in sight, and then move up. Take the middle path again, blast everything, and keep a safe distance so the planes that pop out from underneath won't crash into you. Just watch out for the ice sheet right before the spot you move back up. Watch the ice sheet in this spot and get ready for a shitload of gunfire. Shooting them down is almost impossible to pull off without dying, so stay as high as you can and wait for the gunfire to clear. It's not easy. There'll be some more lasers and guns and fucking ice sheets. Gotta hate that ice. These red things will fire shots back to back. Stay as far back as you can and don't speed up at all till you clear them. A few guns and satellite dishes later, you'll reach the end. Land here. Now it's Captain Planet vs. Duke Nukem and this goddamn game is over. Too bad the stage is even more fucking frustrating than the last one. First, these red orbs fire one shot at a time in a circular rotation. Try to follow just behind the pattern to avoid it. These small red balls block your path. Use water to freeze it up and then earth to blast through it. Same goes with these larger red ones, except you can punch through these after they're frozen. I wonder why the smaller ones are stronger. These electrical currents will warp you to another section of the level. Just make sure you don't touch the red orbs. You have to connect with just the electricity. Now what's up with this? These particular red orbs will not be frozen with water like all the others. You can use it to slip between them, but why the inconsistency? Sneak by these pink balls when they get out of your way, and then you'll meet this drill thing that fires a rapid shot. It'll take breaks here and there, and when the spring on top of it raises, that's when you can punch it. So wait above it, and then sneak down and punch, just like the robot, and then go into the portal. First, use the water to get by these pink balls, and watch out for the walls in this area, they all kill you. Which isn't good news since the spaces are so fucking narrow. And look at that, the orb in the wall just came out and attacked me. There was no way I could have avoided that. Well, you can avoid it if you use water, but how the hell was I supposed to see that coming? Fly through the safe zone of the rotating shot of this orb and head down this corner using the water to get by another of these orbs in the wall. Now here's where shit really starts to get fucked up. You'd think that you need to go through this portal you find here at the end of the corridor, but nope, it sends you back to the last one you just came in. You're supposed to go into the portal up here, of course. Use water to get through all this shit if you can, then punch out the drill and take the lower path here, and once again, don't take the first portal you see. Fly up and it'll lead you to the one you really want to go through. Trying to get between these weaving pink balls is like trying to flip a coin and getting it to land on its side, so use water to get by it if you have the energy. Then take the upper path at this fork and oh my god is this place infested with hazards. Use water to get through it and if you need a power up, slip into this little haven here and grab it. If you're not picky, I suggest invincibility so you can actually freeze and punch these fucking balls without getting hit by oncoming fire. Kill the drill, take the portal, and it's on to the final boss, Duke Nukem. He just stands there and sends these two projectiles at you. The ball with the rings around it will bounce off these beams in the background that look like razor blades. This attack is more frequent. The regular attack is a smaller ball that goes much faster. It locks into your position, so always keep an eye out for it. Punching him doesn't do shit, and neither do any of the weapons. So how the hell do you defeat him? 
Oh, isn't it obvious? You're supposed to position the razor blade beams into a specific combination by punching them into position so that his attack will bounce off of them and crash into the machine above him. Yeah, that's something that's easy to figure out considering you probably have one life left, maybe two if you're lucky, and by the time you realize that punching doesn't work, you'll get a game over and have to go back to the beginning of this brutal fucking stage and endure that mess all over again, and have to keep repeating this process of going through this hellacious level and figuring out where these are supposed to line up, maybe getting a little bit more progress every time. Yeah, you'll be sure to solve this cryptic puzzle in no time. If anyone actually ever beat this without any save states or a walkthrough, I'm convinced they've never been laid. And for the record, I did use save states, so let's not even go there. So anyway, here's the combination you want these razor blades facing. You have to dodge all the gunfire in the process. Good luck with that when you're real close to him. Then once you get him in the right spot, you also have to get out of the way so you don't get hit with any more of the fast attacks. Because the ring balls will take a few hits to destroy the machine. Once the machine is done, so is the game. Thank god it's over. So the fortress blows up, you get a generic congratulations from Gaia, and Captain Planet gives you the thumbs up, flies into the distance, and you get this awkward shot of the sky for like a half an hour, and that's it. Terrific. And Gaia tells you that you can input the password to see the ending again, just in case you felt like wasting even more time. <sighs> Captain Planet wasn't a great cartoon to begin with, but this game is so terrible that it really does not do the show any justice. They teach you to recycle goods and not waste anything, so why the hell did they waste all this plastic to build these cartridges for this piece of shit game, not to mention the time that was wasted by anyone who played it. And that's something you can't recycle. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time. Captain Planet, he's our hero, gonna take pollution down.